my name is Meryl, and I'm joined today by Diana and Alexis, uh, which will they'll both be presenting. Alexis is going to be helping with the chat. So first thing, I just want to let everybody know that you're welcome if you have questions throughout. Feel free to uh, write those in the chat, or you can even unmute your microphone if you will want to, or as well as raise your hand. You're welcome to do that as well. So without further ado, we'll go ahead and get started. All right, before we get started, just a little bit about Expo. We're a free center available through the Fulton Public Library. We're located in Burton Bar Library downtown. Um, if you'd like to have an appointment with a one on one advisor, they're available to help plan for college, apply for financial aid, apply for a GED, and uh, look for apprenticeships. So if you'd like to apply, um, request a virtual appointment. Um, the link is on your screen right now. And without further ado, Okay, thank you, Alexis. So again, um, my name is Meryl, and it'll be myself and Diana who will be presenting Essay Essentials today. And basically what we're going to cover is why the essay is such an important part of your college application and scholarship applications. Some of you might have already worked on uh, essays before. Um, but if you haven't, there's going to be a lot of great information for you about what's important. We're going to give you some tips about what's important and what to focus on when you write your essay. So you can go ahead and we'll do the next slide. So why is the essay important? First of all, it's your opportunity to tell your story. And really how you're telling your story is you have to think of it in terms of you can, it's your opportunity or your chance to speak to these scholarship and admissions committees. Most likely you're not gonna have an opportunity to have any type of in-person interview, even post COVID or pre COVID before that was pretty rare, most likely for students to meet face to face. So this is your chance to talk to those committees directly. And it's your chance to tell them your story, who you are. You can assign meaning to events that uh, happened in your life. And the key thing here is the event doesn't have to be an exciting event or topic. It's what you, the student, has to say about it that matters to the reviewers. How did the experience change you? What did you learn from the experience? And how did you grow from that experience? And really, how will that experience, whatever it might be, uh, continue to influence you into the future? So those are the kinds of things that you're going to be talking about. And you also want to think in terms of the stories that you share in an essay or what the reviewer, whoever is going to be reading it, if they are engaged with it, that's what they're going to use to advocate for you to either get into that college or to uh, get that scholarship. So th these stories are very important in that way. This is your opportunity also to portray your personality. They're going to have all of your, your GPA, your grades on the application. They're going to also have your test scores and any information about extracurricular activities, things like that. But those are just uh, facts on a page, right? They don't really tell the reviewer anything. And also, a lot of students might have very similar applications. They might look if they are, are side by side, everything might look very much the same, the same GPA, maybe the same test scores. Here in the essay, you can portray your personality and really stand out from the group. So that's another thing that you want to be thinking about as you're writing your and working on these essays. And last, you're going to be demonstrating uh, your writing and critical thinking skills. So this is your opportunity to showcase what you've been learning in school, right? That shows that you know how to write and knows how show that you have good critical thinking skills. So it's also extremely important, and you'll hear us say this throughout, it's going to be mentioned more than once, why it's so important to take your time with the essay and have others proofread the essay. And that's something that I want to mention 
is at College Depot. We do provide that service where Diana and myself are happy to help you with editing. We, we don't write the essays for you, but we certainly are happy to help edit your essays. The only thing we ask is that you give us enough time uh, usually we say about seven days or so if you can, you know, send those essays over and then before they're due and then we can go ahead and, and read them and review them and edit them and give you our feedback on those essays. And another thing about proofreading is that it's always nice to have more than one set of eyes looking at them. So you can certainly utilize our uh our uh, review, uh, Diana and myself, or other people, if you have a teacher or family member or someone you trust. So more than one set of eyes is always good as well. Okay, next slide, please. Thank you. So here are some examples of scholarship essay questions. You're also going to be uh, hearing the term prompt. So it's the same thing. If you hear scholarship essay prompt or question, it means the same thing, but you might see that. So I always like to point that out just in case. And these are some examples. I'm going to read them off just to give you an idea of what you might be seeing. So we'll just start with the first one, which is how will your study of blank contribute to your immediate or long range career plans? Number two, describe how you have demonstrated leadership ability both in and out of school. Number three, describe your most meaningful achievements and how they relate to your field of study and your future goals. And number four, why are you a good candidate to receive this award? And you'll notice that these questions are different, right? Some of them are very specific and targeted. They're asking you these to, to write an essay because they want to know a very specific thing about the student. So for example, the first one is how will your study of blank contribute to your immediate or long range career plans? Well, that they say you want to study engineering. So they want to know very specifically, you know, how you going and becoming an engineer, what is that going to do for you for your career plan? So that's a very targeted and specific question. Another one I, um, I like to point out is number two about describing how you have demonstrated leadership ability both in and out of school. This is the type of question you want to be careful about because I, you might write a wonderful essay all about all the leadership uh, or organizations that you have in school, say you're president of the student body or you're involved in other clubs and your leadership ability in those clubs. But then if you forget to address outside of school, you're not fully answering the question. So it's going to be really important for you to reread the questions as you are writing your essays. And then another one, for example, number four is a very broad question. Why are you a good candidate to receive this award? This question, you can actually go in many different directions and take it wherever you really want, why you think that you're a good candidate. So you'll notice some of them are very targeted and some of them are more broad. And just depending on uh, your experience, some are, you know, some are gonna be easier than others depending on the student for sure. And what I would recommend with these essay example questions is to start practice writing. That's going to be really important. So you have these examples. This is going to be loaded. Um, this uh, presentation will be uploaded online. Or you can always go to the uh, website, the College Depot website, and we have the scholarship section there. And you can just look at some scholarships and see the applications and take one of those questions and start writing some example essays. That is going to be something really, a really useful tool for you to get comfortable. OK, next slide, please. Um, Meryl, yes. this is Diana. I'll just make a comment about the questions. Yes. Um, they're all pretty obvious, and I hope you're all seeing that as Meryl explained and read them to you. The questions, I always say, may seem pretty silly, and they might even seem dumb. But what has to be brilliant is your answers to those questions. The question might be perfectly average, but you want your answer to be unique and to talk about the specifics of you. Thank you. 
Perfect. So again, you want to be preparing yourself. So first of all, I congratulate you for coming today on a, a Wednesday afternoon because you're obviously already starting to prepare yourself by trying to uh, write the best essays you can by learning some of these tips that we're going to go over today. Begin writing early. Use those uh, essay questions as an example and start writing them. And the nice thing is, is even if you don't have that specific question on a particular college application or a, a scholarship application, you'll have a basic outline if you write some uh, several essays uh, as you're practicing, you'll have those as an outline in order to utilize those for the actual uh, applications that you end up doing. Practice again, uh, honing those writing skills. It's if you're not familiar with this type of writing, it could be a little different than what you you're used to from school. And so by practicing, you're going to get more and more comfortable with it. And also think about how you want to present yourself. This one is important. You're not only going to be answering these questions, but you also want to think how you want to present yourself as you're answering these questions. So you're a complex person. You've lived 17, 18 years, and you need to think about and decide what to highlight in each of the applications. And also you're going to want to figure out because different committees are going to be looking for different things. They're going to be very interested. One might be very interested in hearing about specific adversities that you've overcome, while another might be more interested in intellectual curiosity or even your career goals, as we saw the example on the previous slide. So you really want to think about what do you want to highlight about yourself as you're answering these questions. And on that note, I'm going to have each of you, I have one question for the group and you can go ahead and put it in the chat. And this is just a, a little brainstorming activity. So to get you thinking about how you might be presenting yourself on an essay. But go ahead and come up with one word that describes yourself. Um, anything you know, like creative, funny, friendly, those kind of words, any type of uh, adjective that describes yourself, or it doesn't even have to be that. And go ahead and write it in the chat and I'll give you a moment and we'll see what you guys came up with. And again, it's just giving you sort of an idea of what you're going to be thinking about and, and how to brainstorm for writing your essays. And actually you might even get an essay question that is simply this question. What is one word that can drive you, describe yourself? And we'll see what any of the responses that we get in a moment. I don't see anything yet, but it could be. Do we have anything, Alexis? Uh, oh, here yeah, we go. Has, yeah, there you go. Um, we got artistic, creative, uh, thoughtful, another creative. Diana said Excellent. relentless. Determined, uh, patient. That's a great one. Perfect. That's exactly what I'm, I'm talking about. So that that's just, again, a, a little brainstorming activity, but you can even do this as you're preparing to write an essay. You can maybe have a list of adjectives that describe yourself uh, as you know, have that to the side. Hard working. I see that that's perfect. Those are those are all great examples. And hopefully that that helped a little bit to see the kinds of things that you, you're going to be thinking about as you write these. So we'll move on to doing your research. This is another important. Uh, oh, if you can go back one, I'm sorry, it's the bottom half of the. Thank you. So doing your research is also really important. A lot of times the students are focused so much on how to write a. a wonderful essay and how you want to present yourself, but you also want to be doing research about the organization or the college that you are applying to. I will say this, it is reviewers will notice if you don't know anything about where you're applying. It is very noticeable. You want to be tying in some of the research that you do in as you are writing your essay. So apl apply that information and cater it in your essay accordingly. One place you can go to do that research, you can look on their website and see what their mission statement is. That they a lot of mission statements state very clearly and precisely what that organization's goals are. And then also you can figure out 
how you are qualified, why you are qualified for that particular scholarship or to attend this college. By doing some of this research, it's going to help you match up some of those qualifications, and you can even highlight those in your essay. So I'll stop here. Does anyone have any questions before I move forward? Okay, I think think we're okay, so we can go ahead and move forward, but feel free to put any questions in the chat and we'll get to those. So knowing your readers, as I mentioned, that they're going to know if you don't know anything about the organization or the college that you're applying to. So understanding their mission statement, that's one of the easiest things you can do is go right to their website and see what their mission statement is. Also see any other information about the school and what their organizational goals might be as well. Reading bios and essays of past winners, that is a great tool. And a lot of these organizations have them posted right on the website. So you can actually see the types of students that they've given the scholarship out to before, as well as the essays and the types of essays that actually won the scholarship. So I can't emphasize enough how helpful that would be to you to go to those websites and see if you can find the bios and the essays of past winners. Analyzing that prompt, you're going to want to keep coming back to the prompt or the question as you're writing your essay because you might write a really quality essay and then all of a sudden you read the question again and realize you didn't answer it. Like you sort of got on a roll and you were think you were doing a great job, but then you didn't really answer the question. So you want to be careful about not going off on a tangent. And then you also want to read between the lines. It's your job uh, to figure out what they want to each organization wants you to emphasize in that essay. And then last but not least is ask questions. If you're not sure if you're eligible for a specific scholarship, go ahead and give them a call. Same thing with admissions. If you have some admissions questions as you're working on your application, most of these places are really happy to talk to students. As long as you're polite about it and nice about it, they're happy to take any of your questions. OK, so now we're going to talk about this particular type of essay writing. As I mentioned, it could be very different than uh, the style that you have utilized before in school. And this essay is essentially telling a story about something which contributed to you being the person that you are which is of course very different than what you might be used to. In school, you might have a typical, for depending on the class, a typical five paragraph type essay with an introduction, a middle and a, th a thesis that you're trying to, to work on through the essay. This is gonna be different. You're, you're wanting to tell the reviewers and telling a narrative story. So what that also means is you're not only talking about personal experiences, but you're also wanting to use really descriptive, exciting and really active words. The key is, is you wanna engage your reader. Whoever is reading this wants to know who you are. They wanna know more about the student. So the most important thing is to engage your reader in that and then they'll be really interested in reading the rest of the essay. So again, using those vivid details, imagery are, are your goals as you're writing this essay. Now, I do wanna talk about the specific topic or event that you might talk about in the essay. It doesn't have to be something really exciting. A lot of students get really nervous or caught up and think that their lives are boring, that they don't have much to talk about, or even an event that they choose to write about, and they think it's not interesting. But it's the topic isn't what's important. It's how you write about it that makes the experience come to life. So just keep that in mind as you're writing. And I have a great example of an essay that I've read in the past where the student, all they, they were talking about were family dinners, having dinners every week with her family. Very, very simple topic, right? But the, the essay was so engaging. She really uh, used imagery and details about her younger siblings and what was happening at the dinner table and all the interactions that it made the whole experience come to life. And it was a beautiful essay because it also talked about how important these dinners ended up being to this student and how much she was going to miss them as she went off to school. So really focus on uh, the 
the storytelling aspect and the reviewer wanting to know who you are versus really worrying about some exciting story that you have to come up with. Content. So as we were talking about content is important and not necessarily in the way like I just mentioned about it being something super like some really interesting crazy story that you have. It's about how you focus on that content. So first of all, you want to strive for depth rather than breadth. So what that means is you want quality over quantity. You've lived a long life. As we mentioned, you're a complex person. There's no way to include everything, everything in your life in your essay. And I've had students, I know Diana has, where they've attempted to put every single thing they've ever experienced in an essay. And that just becomes, it's too much and, and it doesn't engage the reader. And frankly, it can be boring. Even if there was interesting things there, it's just too much to read. So you want to narrow your focus to one or two major themes and focus on those themes and you'll do your it'll make the essay so much better in the, in that way you want to stay aware of the reader's attention span and the the prompt as we we've mentioned a few times and then the word limit there's a reason that they have a word limit right they they don't want students to be writing novels they only have a limit, limited amount of time to read these essays so you do not want to go way over the word limit and you also don't want to be way under a word limit either. You don't have to be exactly on the nose, on the dot, but you want to be as close to that word limit as you can. Because if you if something as simple as that, if you if you're 300 words above the word limit, it's first thing the reviewer is going to think is you didn't read the instructions. You know, something very simple. It's not going to it's not going to make you look good. So you really want to remember about the word limit. And that's what, that can be one of the most difficult things as students write these essays. And I know Diane and I work with students on that. They, they have a great essay, but then they don't realize until they're done how many words over the word limit they are. So you have to then start cutting things. We're great at that. We're great word cutters, yeah. guys. <laughs> yes. And I did just see a, qu a question. Can you read that off, Alexis? I, it just popped up on my... Yes, Maria asked, what would you recommend for someone who doesn't often read or write and has trouble created, creating imagery? Sometimes I'd, let, I'd try to write a scenery or event, but I can't seem to describe it or make it sound as well as I would like it. Well, so first of all, you're probably, it, it's experience, right? So you're, the key thing is, is to practice. That's why you're here listening to us today and taking some of those essay questions and practicing. And sometimes I know students as well as all of us can be our harshest critic, right? And I bet it's not as bad as maybe you're saying that you probably have more imagery in there. And utilizing things like if you want to use descriptive words, you know, that's what a thes thesaurus is for, things like that. You can always utilize those kind of things. But I would say start practicing writing now to and answering some of those questions. And that's going to get you more comfortable with this. So when you actually have an essay that you need to turn in, you you'll be ready for that. And I don't know if Diane, if you have any other additional. No, I think it's just practice makes yeah. perfect. Start with, and I still do this uh, 40 years after being in college, um, write a rough draft and then not embellish, but enhance it with words. Like if you said a green forest, try to find another word like an emerald green or an emerald forest. So try to kind of step up on the descriptions and the imagery. And if you send us something, even if it's basic, we can make some of those suggestions for you. We can't write the essay for you, but we can maybe suggest, have you thought of this word? And I think, Meryl, your thoughts about a thesaurus are great. Don't look for the biggest or most sophisticated word you can use, though, because sometimes you'll be using a word you don't even understand. Yes. But if you know the word and you can find a slightly better version for it and not sound like a dictionary or a thesaurus, then you're doing well. So, Maria, my advice would be thanks, first of all, for asking the question. Yeah. But secondly, I would echo what, what uh, Meryl said. You're probably doing a lot better than you think. Yes. 
For, for sure. And practice. Thank you, Diane. And practice is, is the key for sure. And also, you know, not everybody, when we say using the descriptive words, it doesn't have to be, you know, again, like an like a book that you read because none, nobody is expecting you to be an author, right? right. That, 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 that's, so it doesn't have to be that that level of writing for sure. But that is a great question, so thank you. So you also wanna not just state, so here's another example. You wanna demonstrate something. So rather than telling the reader that you value volunteering in the community, so this is a perfect example, illustrate the concept with a story in which you were a volunteer. So instead of writing simply, I love volunteering at the animal shelter. Well, that's wonderful and they're gonna like that. What you wanna do is you wanna say, well, I was working there on a Sunday and this, this dog came in who had been abused and talk about the journey you might have had maybe taking care of that dog and how the dog then went off and was adopted that's where you're really demonstrating and not just stating that you enjoy volunteering Walk I, that just, I just smiled at that story <laughs> and you were telling it not writing it but yeah. you just you grab an animal lover that way yeah but, and you demonstrate it. As Veryl said, that's the key. Yes, exactly. So and just use those descriptive words and walk the reader through your experience. OK, next slide. <laughs> so this is a funny slide. Um, of course, you see the gentleman who's saying, I only have 1,000 more essays to read before lunch. That's most likely an exaggeration, but it's not far from the truth because these reviewers are reading a lot of essays. I mean, a lot of essays. So the, if you take one thing away from today's uh, presentation, don't bore your readers. And I know we've we've been talking about ways to make your essay exciting, but you really just don't want to bore your reader. You want to come up with things as we use the example of the animal shirt. You don't want to state things about yourself, you want to demonstrate those things about yourself. And if you do that, you're not going to bore your readers. But this is one of the most important pieces of advice we could give you for writing these essays. And you want to make sure that this gentleman, even though he's really tired, looks like he remembers who you are. So he remembers the student that's in front of him and he's reading that essay and he's going to remember when he goes to the committee and talk about you and you made an impression on him. They don't have a lot of time to read these essays. They, they have to read them in a very brief period of time. So you want to engage them and grab their attention. OK, so be yourself and be positive. You want to be original and bring it to life. So this is where, again, sometimes uh, readers, excuse me, uh, students get a little bit nervous because we're talking about trying to really engage the reviewers and things like that. But remember, you are, even though you don't think you have had an interesting life, you're a unique person and you are interesting and you have had some interesting experiences. So by being yourself, you will be original. There's only one of you in the whole, in the whole world. And that's what you want to focus on when you're writing these essays. You want to bring the reader in with a captivating start and end with a powerful conclusion. So you don't want to start an essay with, my name is Meryl and I would like to go to ASU. You know, that's that's wonderful, but that's not going to engage the reader at all. You can begin the, uh, uh, an essay with uh, all kinds of different things. You can even, um, it doesn't even have to be uh, complete sentences. We, Diane and I have seen all kinds of interesting uh, beginning sentences that really grab your attention. And that's what you want to go for. And then you want to remember about the conclusion. You want to tie everything together. Sometimes uh, that's also a tricky part of the essay is to not leave the, the, the end of the essay just hanging there. You want to wrap it all up and come back to the start and whatever uh, uh, you were the, the point you were trying to make and of course focusing on the prompt and answering the question as well um writing in a way that provides insight into your character and goals as you are thinking about things to write about just remember that the reviewer again as i've said wants to get to know you uh, who you are and differentiate yourself from other candidates you also want to be positive uh, many times the question might actually ask you and to focus about 
adversities or difficult times you've gone through. So you might actually have to write about something that a trying time in your life. But what you really want to do, because those can be tricky, is you want to focus on lessons learned and what the these difficult times, how it's going to move you forward into the future. So you really want to be, even if you're writing about something difficult, you want to be positive in, in your overall message and how that those experiences changed you for the better and the types of lessons you learned. Also, if you do have any specific academic deficiencies or any issues with that, it's probably better to not focus on the essay in the essay on that. You can there usually is can be a place on a lot of these applications where you can uh, think about doing an addendum to explain any deficiencies or blemishes in your academic career. So that's something if it is something that is, is you've gone through, you can do it in those areas. Any questions? I think we're, we're good. We're good to move on. Yes. Okay. <laughs> now we're going to get into the practical parts of this. We're going to show you some examples. Um, one, a real life example from a student who graduated in May. Uh, and worked with us, but we're going to start with some bang up beginnings. I call them your, your very special introductions. These are some intros we got from students who are were actually Stanford applicants, and they were ultimately admitted to Stanford in part because of their very unusual essays. And some of them started this way. I change my name each time I place an order of, at Starbucks. I read this as the first line, and I'm immediately wondering why on earth would anybody do that? Why would anybody make up a name? And I'll give you a reason why this person may have done it. Maybe they're uh, an aspiring actor, and they're trying out new roles for themselves, including new names, or maybe they want to try out a, a different nationality or a different language. So again, I'm intrigued by why they think that's important to talk about. And I'm going to read further. What about I have old hands? This one was a tough one for me, but I finally figured out what the person was talking about. He had juvenile arthritis, which is typically arthritis as an old person's disease. But there is such a thing as children or young people who have arthritis. So perhaps that's the direction he wanted to go in. He wanted to talk about his battle with an illness. And as Meryl said, hopefully he is getting back into, once he talks about that battle, how he's overcome it and how he's living his life now with juvenile arthritis. The third one is very intriguing as well. And I didn't even know what it meant when I first read it. I had never seen anyone get so excited about mitochondria. Well, you're going to know I'm not a science major or interested at all in science because I didn't know what mitochondria was. But obviously, this student had a teacher or a tutor or someone in their lives who really was passionate about science or specifically about biology, about cell biology. And watching this person in action made that student become very interested in that study field and that career field. That's a great way to explain why you're interested in doing that. You're modeling someone that, that really kind of captured your attention when you were in school. Or the very last one, we talk about adversity. What about when I was in the eighth grade, I couldn't read. I really want to know more about this student, particularly if now the student has a stellar GPA or even if they're struggling in school right now. I want to know how they got to the eighth grade without being able to read. Um, this is a system failure to me. Um, and additionally, how they overcame it because obviously they know how to read now. So how did they get from eighth grade to this period with the ability to do it? 
this gives you some ideas of ways that you can have a really exciting intro. Maybe your introduction is a quote. You have to be careful with those so you don't get too routine or mundane. Or maybe it's a, something others would consider a cliche. Um, one of the best essays I ever read, the first sentence was, I was the straw that broke the camel's back. That, my, my folks, is a cliche. But when she finished the essay, boy, did I buy into how she was the, the straw that broke the camel's back in her family. So don't be afraid to be different. Write a partial sentence. Don't write 20 of them, but write one. Write a one word beginning. Write an introduction like this one. Let that be your guide to being interesting and innovative. Next, please. Now I'm going to call upon you to think for a minute. Very simple. I want you to look at this picture, this cat, and this poor mouse, and I want you to think about these four sentences. And in a moment, I'm going to ask you to evaluate which one is the best. And I will read them for you. My cat, oh, I'm sorry. My cat ran across the field and caught a mouse. I'm blind. Number two, my cat quickly ran across the field and skillfully caught a mouse. Number three. My cat darted across the field and pounced on a mouse. And finally, number four, a mouse was fiercely captured by my cat who ran at a very quick rate across the field. Which one do you wish you wrote? One, two, three, or four. If you could type briefly in the chat, we'll talk about it. And Alexis, if you can give me kind of a running total of which one's the best. According to our poll, I would appreciate it. All right. So right now we're getting a lot of threes. Okay. So quite a bit of threes. Let's see. Anybody with any other thoughts? I see a lot of threes too. We got so another three. Three, three yeah. is your winner, huh? Looks like it. Okay. In the interest of time, I will tell you my choice and what we consider to be the right choice. Number one is pretty basic, guys. You run, you catch a mouse. Uh, not very interesting, right? Although I, I could see it happening. I'm not really intrigued by that. Number two is an example of the use of adverbs when they don't really add anything. This is where I would cut if you sent this sentence to me. If you needed to cut on words, I would immediately say quickly ran. I mean, what, you run slow? Ran implies quickness to me. Skillfully caught, well, if you can catch a mouse, you're skillful. You're a cat or a mouse trap, right? So in those instances, I would probably cut those words and say they're not adding anything to this description. And number four, skipping number three intentionally, number four is in the passive voice. It's not capture, it was captured. And passive voice is always less effective than an active verb choice. First of all, it uses up extra words, and second of all, it doesn't add anything. So the very best choice of words here is my cat darted across the field and pounced on a mouse. You can see, all re you can see real action there. You can see that cat kind of stealthily going or, or maybe even running to get that mouse. But darted says something to me. Pounced says, I could see that cat on that mouse. And this paints kind of a gory but effective picture, right? And that is why number three in the um, opinion of those of us at the College Depot is the strongest but the simplest choice of all here. So thank you all for participating in that.
and we can move on now. I want you, as Meryl said, to always present your best self. And sometimes that means you're going to have to, to eliminate some of the things that might be important to you, but that are very, very mundane to a reader. Divorce is a popular topic because many of us have personal experiences with it, but it's so common that unless you can lend something brand new to the discussion, try to stay away from the sadness of one of your relatives or your parents' divorces. All of our parents have sacrificed for us. So I really don't enjoy the essays that are spent on talking about, I owe my parents everything. I know that. I'm glad you do. That makes me know you love them. But I don't necessarily need to read about it to know that. So kind of stay away from those topics. I don't want to know that you are a diligent Democrat or a uh, a Republican, a diligent Republican. I was going to say rabid, but that's a bad word. So I don't care about your political or your religious views. Those don't matter to me. If you can portray them without being controversial and at the risk of offending someone, yes, sometimes you have to talk about those things. If you are asked specifically, what is your opinion of immigration reform? You're going to have to address that but you can do it respectfully. You can do it in more of a debate than an argumentative format. You can put your opinion out there, but stay away from those very controversial areas if you can, unless you are specifically asked to address them. Um, you don't wanna go off on a tangent is really the important thing. And if you're going to discuss something that is negative in your life, and you were even asked to talk about adversity or about challenges, you want to be sure that not only do you dwell on the adversity or the challenge, but instead you focus more on the back end of that. What have you learned? What have you done? What, how have you overcome that? And how is this now a positive experience for you versus just a negative situation in your life? So be sure, and we will help you with this, if we feel that you've ventured into a controversial area that you might want to stay away from, or that you are in a situation where you're not being quite positive enough, we will help you get through that and come out the other side. We also want to emphasize to you the importance of editing. I don't care how rough the stuff is that you send to me. It can be a really rough draft. It can be the very beginning of what you send us to look at. But at the end, I do not want you to submit to a scholarship committee or an admissions committee, um, misspelled words, typos, um, things we're all guilty of in first drafts, incomplete sentences, um, run-on sentences. We, we have the opportunity to clean that up. So let's go for it. Whether you have a friend reading it, whether you have a family member reading it, a teacher, or someone at College Depot that does not know you at all. Um, we're happy to look and give you objective opinions and excuse my ringing landline in the background. Next, please. I don't want any of you to look at this screen. I want you to listen to me for a minute. I am going to talk about one of the bright lights in my life, her name is Jazz Hernandez. She is a 2021 graduate of Bioscience High School at the Phoenix Union High School District. She is on her way next month to her dream school in Maine, Bates College. From the time I met Jazz, her dream was to go to this school. And I worked with her for several weeks and almost several months to craft an essay that would show Bates College exactly who she was. And here it is in its final form. Meryl and Alexis are going to read this essay to you. So rather than reading it for yourself, I want you to listen to this essay. This is one of the most valuable tools you will ever have. 
when you write something, read it to yourself. Have someone read it to you. See if it puts you to sleep or if it keeps you awake and how interested you are in it and whether you can put yourself in the room with the student who wrote this essay. And without further ado, I want to introduce you to Jazz Hernandez, who was going to be with us today herself, but she had to work because she's getting ready for her college experience. So Meryl, would you be Jazz for a moment, please? Absolutely. <laughs> okay, so I imagine the microscopic bacteria dancing around the kitchen, spreading the stench of spoiled meat around our petite kitchen like incense and toasting to the tension in the air. They were the uninvited guests at our dinner party. The Salmonella family high fives from behind my enraged mother who stood inches away steaming. They miraculously crept past the front door in the summer heat, all because I forgot to put the defrosted packet of drumsticks away. I think with a world full of teachers and support staff, friends and peers to tell me that my mistakes don't define me, my mother will always make sure to do so. Mistakes to her make you low life, yet to the world, mistakes are the simple fertilizer needed for growth. I briefly consider swooping my little friends off the chicken, retreating upstairs and closing my bedroom door, but I cannot. I need to understand my mother's frustration and she wastes no time in illustrating each of her sacrifices. From the moment she left her parents in Oaxaca at age 13 to the breakfast she skips and the hours she works cleaning for other people at less than minimum wage, all for those drumsticks and me. Neither the bacteria nor I are dancing anymore. Thank you. And now, Alexis, I'll let you read the middle part of Jazz's essay. Post cleanup, as the chicken boils in a bubbling pot, I'm left with the taste of dissatisfaction once I finish eating, perhaps because of the rancid odor the bacteria left behind, which lingers like thoughts. The food my mother serves me each night, the laptop I use for school, even being here in the States, all are her more abstract versions of how she supports and gives to me. Is it right for me to ask for even more tangible support? Words of encouragement are seldom, if ever, spoken aloud. I can't remember school-related events my mother has attended with me or interest in my club activities, questions beyond how was your day? How hard could it be? I'm aware I interacted with others the same way my mother mod modeled. Give, give, give materials, notes, even money to peers who craved a snack from the vending machine. All pristine ways of getting to know someone. But when I began messier interactions and ventured beyond the superficial, I gained a deep root connection with others. Like on the drive to my first debate competition, just as I was looking over my partner's case for the umpteenth time, the bacteria began to feast on the crumbs we left on the floor and in the seats of the cracks in the cracks of the seats. Even if we're eaten up alive, this is a learning experience, I said sternly. Thank you, Alexis. My partner laughed and the bacteria made signs to cheer us on. They always make appearances. The bacteria gather mimicking my autobiographical spiel of transforming from a student to a learner as I talk to eighth graders who can't help but strum the wooden guitar my school showcases during recruitment events. They're planting discarded seeds as I build sweat equity, refurbishing my community gardens, wooden furniture. They even help me haul cardboard out of a dumpster to control the muddy trenches of the Matsuri Festival. The bacteria reemerge and eavesdrop as I tell my mother I'm staying late for school after school. Again, she asks. Again, I reply. She wants more details, which I provide sparingly. I wear a tight smile at the thought that she genuinely cares, but I also, but also how I want more. School offers me what she doesn't, a palpable sense of community, the missing embrace, unlimited, unconditional support. 
Now, as I explore potential colleges investigating more than academic majors and beyond acceptance rates, I am looking for a residential community whose support imitates the bacteria aiding in my digestion and building connections. Thank you very much. Um, we're, we're short on time because we have another workshop coming up at five, but I want to go to the next slide. If anyone has anything in chat to say about this essay, I'd be very interested in hearing it. But I want to talk about the anatomy of this essay. First of all, who knew that you could write an entire essay around bacteria on defrosted chicken? and turn that into a discussion about your relationship with your mother and work in activities that you enjoy doing and why you want to go to this specific college because you are seeking an inclusive community and this school that Jazz is going to be going to is all about that, all about inclusivity and diversity and all of those things. So I want you to think about what she did here. And she did it very simply, but very eloquently with the use of some very, very interesting imagery and words, but nothing too terribly sophisticated. And when you talk to her, she talks exactly like this. Her first paragraph captures that moment in time. I, I actually felt like I was in the kitchen with her when something happened to her that made her realize, you know, I don't like my mom very much when she's like this. And I'm looking for more support. I want people to understand me. So her mom is a sacrificer. That's what all good parents do. And Jazz is modeling that when she gives away money for the vending machine or help on a test. But she needs more meaningful interactions. So she has strong imagery. The feeling that I'm in the same room with her, and I'm wondering where the heck is this first paragraph going, right? It's the middle paragraph or the body of the essay that leads some context to the beginning scene, and they explain a little better what this bacteria thing is all about. They also give her the give her the opportunity to unveil or elaborate on some of her activities or interests. You see how she worked those in there without saying, I work in the community garden and I'm on my school's recruitment team. She described it. It was, it was vivid. It, was, it made her activities come to life. And then finally, the last paragraph she and I worked on for several weeks because she didn't know how to end this thing. How do I, how do I say I really love my mother? Because what this says, if she doesn't end with that, is her mother and she don't have any kind of a good relationship. And by the way, they do. So I told her to try to work in things there that show that her mother loves her and she knows it and she loves her mother. But this is what she hopes to get out of her college environment. I see there were lots of comments coming in. Anything in particular you'd like to uh, feature, Alexis? I hope you all saw, this is not the worst essay I've ever read. It's one of the best. It may not be the best, but this is the most complete description of a person I've ever read after I got to know this young lady. Anything particular stand out for you, Alexis? We had someone in the chat just asking um, if uh, the PowerPoint will be available once, once this presentation is over. Um, so I went ahead and answered that question and let them know that the PowerPoint Excellent. and the recording will be available online so they Excellent. can look through that and say again. Any other comments about Jazz's work? Hopefully you all see how she took a really simple thing like Meryl mentioned, it doesn't have to be, you know, I won the National Spelling Bee, and this is my experience. She talked about chicken on her counter, and she turned that into something that obviously spoke volumes to the school because she did not have the highest ACT score in her class, 
nor did she have a perfect GPA. But was she a perfect fit for this college with this essay? Yes. And did I help her get there or we help her get there? Yes. And am I thrilled for her? Yes. <laughs> Plus, she got an amazing financial aid offer, guys. Amazing. We could go on. I think we're close <laughs> to the end. Yes. Um, remaining questions. I spent 18 hours doing this a few weeks ago with Phoenix Union High School. We don't want to bore you that long, so we gave you the condensed version. But what I want you to all know is that we are here for you. You can send us your work, whether we know you or not, but please tell us what you're working towards, what question you're answering, how many words you're supposed to be writing, and we will respond to you with very thorough comments and edits. Just give us a little time. If you send it, it was due yesterday, then uh, that's going to be tough. If it's due tomorrow, that might be tough. Give us a, at least a little bit of leeway so we can work on it. You can look at our comments and you can work from them. Um, and just wanted to make an advertisement for our GRIT program. Jazz is one of our star GRIT students. We worked with her all year. If you want to know more about that program, look at the College Depot website and sign up. It's a free way to get us to work with you all year long, and we love doing it. Any further questions at all or comments? Meryl, Alexis? Uh, no, I think we just want to also advertise that we have a few more uh, summer sessions that are coming up. Uh, there's one at uh, right at five o'clock, which is scholarships and financial aid, um, which will be talking about exactly what we were talking about with the essay portion of scholarship. So I recommend uh, if you haven't signed up, you can go to the website and get the uh, get the link to join. And then we have quite a few other sessions coming up in the next week, a uh, couple weeks. But thank you for joining us and hopefully you've got some good takeaways and some good tips. And yes, thank you all for being here. I know four o'clock in the afternoon is a tough time. I invite you to tune in at five. My colleagues will be doing a financial aid session and it is sure to be informative and good for you to attend if you can. Thank you so much, everybody. Alexis, Merrill, thank you. Thank you. Of course, thank you. Um, before we end, Maya had a quick question. Certainly. Um, um, if we want to send you an essay, is it something we just email to you or should, should we set it up in an appointment? Should we set up an appointment to discuss it? Excellent. Um, and Alexis, I don't know if you can share our email addresses really quickly. Okay, and yes. That, um, and we suggest emailing us your work first and then when we email it back to you, if you want to uh, set an appointment to talk further about it, that's the point where the appointment is more meaningful. Um, and if I could get to know you through your essay, then when I meet with you, I'm going to feel like your old friend. And I know Meryl feels that way too. If yes. you want an appointment, we will do that. But there's nothing more uncomfortable for any of you than having us look at your work as you sit there. <laughs> we don't like it either, but we feel nervous too. So um, send it and we'll look at it and try to imagine who you are. Yeah. All right. I've sent the emails in the chat um, as well as some contact information for College Depot. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yes. And and if by, for some reason you don't get our email addresses that you can always go that route as well through College Depot. Just let them know. Just specify it's for an essay review. That's the most important. And they'll send it to, to both of us. Yes. And then we uh, we kind of divvy up the work half and half. So yes. we look forward to seeing your stuff. I know it's going to be great. Yes. All right. Well, I have Thank got you, Alexis. Time. I know you have to move on. <laughs> All right. I will see you both.